بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلا آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد Continuing on in our sitting or our, our study of the book Umdat uh, Ahkam, in the chapter of Tahara, we reached a hadith of the, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which refers to the ruling regarding sleeping when one is in a state of sexual imp- uh, impurity, akramakum Allah, meaning one has had relations with their spouse or they have uh, ejaculated akramakum Allah to where they are junub, meaning that they need to make ghusl before they can sleep, uh, before they can pray. So this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu gives us, the, it clarifies us what is the ruling regarding that? What is the ruling in Islam regarding if a person is junub, has sexual impurities on them, uh, can they sleep in that state or must they take ghusl? An Abdullah ibn Umar an Umar ibn al-Khattabi radiyallahu anhu qala ya Rasulullah ayurqudu ahaduna wa huwa junub qala na'am idha tawadda idha tawadda'u ahadukum falyurqud ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim in this hadith hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar and Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. May Allah be pleased with both of them. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, he said, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, O Messenger of Allah, can one of us lay down if he's in a state of junub, if he has sexual impurities from having either sexual relations with their spouse, akramakum Allah, or from orgasm? The Prophet ﷺ responded by saying, Naam, yes, if he makes wudu, then he can lay down. And this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, it shows us the permissibility of sleeping when one is in a state of janaba, and that before they ghusl, it's better and preferred that they make wudu. And it is not, of course, an obligation. But, however, the, some of the ulama, like the Zahiriya, those who take from the, uh, from the text, from the understanding of the text, just from the, what's mentioned in the text, they say that it is an obligation to make wudu, but most of the ulama are on no, that it is not an obligation, but rather it is preferred that a person makes wudu, and even better if they make ghusl before sleeping, if they're sleeping in a state of janaba. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet wasallam is that it is from <coughs> that is from kamal, meaning that it is it is better and more complete that a person does not sleep in a state of janub until they make ghusl. And that it is a rukhsa or it is permissible to, to make wudu instead. So this also shows us the preference to make ghusl. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam illustrated for us. And in another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that by making the ghusl after that, it gives a person, akramakum Allah, it gives them uh, more opportunity to return and have relations again for a second time, or perhaps even a third, depending on the prowess of the individual, akramakum Allah. So the ghusl, it gives a person nashad, it gives them more activity. And this is from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another benefit of this hadith is it also illustrates for us the that it is disliked to sleep when in a state of janaba, that it is disliked without making ghusl or without making wudu. And in this bab, the Shaykh Hafidullah Ta'ala, uh, Rahmatullah Alayhi, he mentioned several ahadith, so we'll mention another hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. An Ummi Salamata Zawja Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Aqalat 
جاءت أم سليم امرأة أبي طلحة إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت يا رسول الله إن الله لا يستهي من الحق هل على المرأة من غسل إذا هي اهتلمت فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم إذا رأت الماء رواه بخاري ومسلم in this hadith of Um Salama the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she said that a woman, that Umm Sulim, which was the wife of Abi Talha, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, she came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she said, O Messenger of Allah, verily Allah is not shy from the truth. Does a woman need to make ghusl if she has a uh, if if she has an orgasm or she has uh, she has an orgasm? Ikramakum Allah. Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi <coughs> the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Nam idharatil ma." Yes, if she sees water. So if a woman she has a an orgasm, ikramakum Allah, or something like this, then, and she sees evidence of that, then she should make ghusl. What we gain from this hadith, that the Shaykh mentioned, have, uh, rahmatullah alayhi, he said that a, a, a woman, she must make ghusl if she has ihtilam. Ihtilam is when we have like a wet dream. So if a woman has a wet dream, then she must make ghusl. If water or if uh, fluid came from her. Another benefit of this hadith, akramakum Allah, is that it illustrates for, for us that women also, when they have wet dreams or they have orgasms, akramakum Allah, that it is similar to the male and that it also excretes a fluid, akramakum Allah. Another bit of this hadith, is that this hadith illustrates for us, it affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla wa ala has the sifa of al-haya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the sifa of al-haya subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner that suits his majesty Another benefit of this hadith is a very important thing is that shyness should not prevent us from asking a question or seeking knowledge. Because there are many masail that might need bayan or might need clarity and we should not let shyness prevent us from asking those types of questions if it is something we need in our life. That's another benefit the Shaykh mentioned from this hadith. Another benefit of this hadith is that it is from the manners that before asking a question, it's the manners of su'al, that before asking a question, you should begin it with a muqaddimah or you should begin it with a introduction to the question, giving some background about what you're asking about. That if it's necessary to make the issue clearer or in order to show, uh, to, to give clarity in the question and to receive clarity in your answer, that you should give background in your question and so that it makes it clear and easy. So this is from the adab of the su'al, and this was the adab of the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, and the sahabiyat, radiallahu ta'ala anhum hunna ajma'een, that they asked questions with the proper mannerisms to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they needed clarification. Those are just some of the benefits that we gain from these two ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.